Hi folks, I'm Jared Bentley. You're watching the Johnson City Press We can Review right here on johnsoncitypress.com. I'm sure there are plenty of things we could be talking about today here on the Week in Review, but yesterday was election day here in East Tennessee, so that means we're going to be talking politics, winners and losers. In a statewide race that surprised many, former frontrunners Diane Black and Randy Boyd failed to overtake outsider businessman Bill Lee, as Lee received 37% of the votes in the Republican primary for governor of the great state of Tennessee. Black had campaigned heavily on her relationship with President Donald Trump, promising to run the state as he runs the country and touting her willingness to shake things up in her home state. Voters, it seems, likened her more to her Washington counterparts in the House and opted for a true outsider in Lee, who comes into politics as a first-timer. Lee will face Democrat Carl Dean in the November election for governor. Dean received 77% of the statewide votes in the Democratic primary. Marsha Blackburn and Phil Bredesen ran away with the Republican and Democratic primaries for the Tennessee United States Senate seat up for grabs in November, facing little competition in either race. The Senate race is looking to be closer than expected as the election draws nearer, with former Governor Bredesen polling well across the state and Blackburn holding her numbers throughout the summer. The new senator will succeed retiring Republican Bob Corker. Johnson City Republican Phil Rowe moved a step closer Thursday to being elected to his sixth term in the U.S. House of Representatives, winning his primary and earning the right to face Democrat Marty Olson in November. Rowe survived a challenge from Kingsport Army veteran Todd McKinley by garnering 73% of the vote compared to McKinley's 16%. Olson, who decided to run for Congress after lawmakers attempted to repeal the Affordable Care Act, ran unopposed in Thursday's Democratic primary. In local elections, Joe Grandy overcame a number of attacks against his campaign and narrowly defeated independent James Reeves by 643 votes. As a county commissioner and chairman of the budget committee, Grandy has been actively involved in county government since he was first elected to the commission eight years ago. He began his campaign by vowing to reduce the county's overwhelming debt, but that message was largely overshadowed by constant criticism and allegations of wrongdoing from his opponents and their supporters during the election process. Incumbent Susie Williams and Jonesboro attorney Jim Wheeler won two of the seven contested races for the Washington County Commission. Eight candidates for county commission faced no challengers in the general election. The Republicans who had clear sailing on the ballot were incumbents Greg Matherly, Robbie Tester, Brian Davenport, Philip Carragher, Gary McAllister, and Mike Boots Ford. Likewise, Jody Jones, a Democrat, faced no opposition in the general election. Washington County Sheriff Ed Graybill was one of five Republican candidates for county offices who breezed to victory without facing an opponent on Thursday's ballot. The others were County Clerk Kathy Story, Circuit Court Clerk Brenda Downs, Trustee Rick Story, and Teresa Bowman, who was elected Register of Deeds. Rusty Barnett won the Carter County Mayor's race handily, and Dexter Lunsford took home enough votes to remain Carter County Sheriff. Barnett was facing a write-in challenge by incumbent Mayor Leon Humphrey during Thursday's general election, and Lunsford won a second term by a vote of 6,142 to 4,804 for independent challenger Steve Stevenson. Unicoi County voters elected a new mayor on Thursday, coming out in force for Garland Bubba Evely, who captured 58% of the primary vote to unseat three-term incumbent Mayor Greg Lynch. In the 4th District, incumbent John Holesclaw received nearly 70% of the primary votes from residents in Carter and Unicoi counties to win the region's only contested primary race for a state legislative seat. That means that John Crawford, Bud Halsey, Timothy Hill, Micah Van Huss, Matthew Hill, and Rusty Crow will all likely return to Nashville in the fall, with all but Matthew Hill running unopposed in the general election. For the full rundown of election results and voting numbers, visit our website at johnsoncitypress.com. This has been the Week in Review. I'm Jared Bentley. Thanks for watching.